Hi, I'm John Dunn, and this is Spilled Ink, and uh, we are very fortunate to have everyone here. It's, a, it's definitely getting colder in Virginia, but uh, it's going to be warm here tonight. Uh, we are reading love poems to celebrate Valentine's Day, which is coming up in two days. Uh, Alice Mergler asked us to all write a, a love poem, so we are going to um, do our best to... Um, give her a go around. So uh, I'm going to start with Brittany Sabatino could not be here. So I'm going to read her poem called A Lover for All Days. A Lover of All Day for All Days by Brittany Sabatino. You put a smile on my face that cold gray mornings can't displace. As a love you can't be replaced. Whether cold or hot, Frequently in my thoughts, you really hit the spot. Morning or afternoon delight, sometimes dark or sometimes light, depending on my international delight. A witch's brew, the seduction of you, turns one cup into two, rebuffing addiction, claiming power of eviction. If I have the conviction, but we both know that is fiction. Mm -hmm. Coffee. My, li my liquid lover. <laughs> so that is A Lover of All Days, A Lover for All Days by Brittany Sabatino. All right, Alice Mergler, you are next. Take it away, Alice. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. All right, now. I wrote to um, Kim Miller, our poet laureate, and asked her if I could use her words about poetry because they're very beautiful. And um, I'm reading from her book, My Poetry is the Beauty You Overlook. And this is just, uh, uh, these are some phrases about poetry and a uh, little about love. Here we go. Remember when you thought words had to be in a melody to sing to you? Poetry was a foreign flavor and acquired taste. You thought poems like Roses Are Red made you well read. You didn't realize poetry is blossomed. I don't blame you. Poetry is often unrecognizable, spoken with passion and whispered, written on hearts in invisible ink. So how can I expect you to embrace the unseen? seen in many forms, but grouped together as one. What is poetry? Poetry is unsolicited help. It holds us up when pain tries to erase our voice. It allows us to pour into emptiness and create peace. The ingredients in one poem can feed people who didn't even realize they were hungry. Poets make feelings tangible. They script mountains into pebbles. Poetic verses feel the wind caressing every syllable. Some poems rhyme, no reason. They almost have a subtle fragrance, an undeniable scent that is unexpected but welcome. The garden of poems is stunning and diverse. Each poet's pen bleeds in alternate personal truth. So don't judge an ink by its color. There are no rules. The lines and paper are just suggestions. Besides, a poet's words ascend from the limitation of paper. They make tears flow. They break stereotypes. Poems are medicinal. And poetry is freedom exhaling. Words are not owned. We just all borrow them. Poetry is rented words meant to make a permanent change. The next time you inhale the aroma of a poem, feel the words and embrace the energy they provide. Embrace unconfinable art drawn with words. Poetry is expression flowered in feelings. It can be a moment or a lifetime of moments. What is poetry? Poetry is the first time you kissed words and they kissed you back. That's Kim Miller, our poet laureate. 
I asked her permission. I told her it would have been better if she had read her own words, but hopefully she's going to read a poem to us tonight. Um, now, uh, here's my love poem. A little bit long, stick with me. I'll go fast. Don Mergler was a fine athlete playing both high school basketball and baseball. He won a four-year college scholarship to play baseball there. I was almost always in the stands. I'm the mom of many boys and hence have attended thousands of games, football, basketball, soccer, baseball, crew, on and on. Also, I attended many games at my high school and middle school, middle school where I taught for 24 years. These games started with the red, white, and blue, the national anthem, and the pride I felt every single time was thrilling. When I was deciding what I truly loved this past week, it was a hard choice. I often say, I love that. I sorted through from avocados to lobster, my convertible, and almost decided on laughter. Because if you know me, you have probably heard me laugh before you knew my name. My decision, however, became easy when Mark Cuban decided to skip the Star Spangled Banner before his Mavericks home games. I tightened my folded hands to not get up and pound the TV. Then, as many of my poems provide, I spilled my emotions into verse. 13 stars, 13 stripes, that's how it all began. Red for valor and hardiness, white for purity and blue for vigilance, perseverance and justice. This cloth represented every woman, child, and man. If you want to know the story of America, let our flag's victorious history lead the way. Start with the 13 colonies who established this symbol, June 14th, 1777, on what we now know as Flag Day. Unity was on every mind as they carefully placed each star. Some say the stripes represent sunshine rays emanating from afar. President George Washington was the only one who served under this design, for other colonies were soon added, as on March time. Let's move ahead now many years, as now states were added one by one to Baltimore Harbor, September 13th, 1814, when Francis Scott Key woke up to dawn's early light to find the War of 1812 had ended. And we won. How did he know? Our flag was raised over the fort there in victory. He was overcome with emotion at this beautiful surprise and inspired by unexpected results. He spent the next hours writing of his country's star spangled banner waving in the sky. In November of 1814, a music store in Baltimore printed his patriotic song sheet music was issued so soon his verses were being sung with heartfelt pride our flag is still there that rose hue morning he had cried our flag song was signed into law by president hoover by an act of congress on march 3rd 1931 becoming our national anthem denoting a unification and pride as by many, the words were sung. From 1912 to August 21st, 1959, there were only 48 stars. Old Glory took us through two more wars, representing our breaking hearts. Then Alaska and Hawaii were added after these 47 years. And soon on every new American flag, 50 stars appeared. In July 1969, Neil Armstrong, as part of the Apollo mission, with millions following his legendary steps, placed our United States flag on the moon. Five more Apollo missions added five more flags fairly soon. Before I end this history, I surely want to say that I love every word of our flag and songs 200 and glorious years. 
And though sometimes during our country's down moments, it might appear that some of our tarnished feelings interfere and hold sway, I will proudly continue to salute my flag and sing my anthem starting with today. Love, Alice Mergler, who loves the flag and our national anthem. Nicely done, Alice. Absolutely fantastic. Right to the point. I loved, I loved your rebuttal of Mark Cuban. It was wonderful. I loved uh, your reading of Kim Miller's uh, poem. So uh, spot on tonight. I thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. I'm glad you suggested the love poem. So we'll turn it over to Thomas Dr. Love Burson. Oh, no mercy. Um, these are actually the first three poems in the book that I am attempting to put together. Um, this one's called Backward is Easy with So Much to Unlearn. I can tell you being brave ain't enough. I wish I knew ahead of time how it would all turn out. Then I could act without a doubt, but maybe I feel I'm just not brave enough for love. Imagine if you will, there was a magic spell, one where you started at the end, as I will tell. You already had all the kids and I was gray and you had started to wrinkle just a bit. We curled up against each other when we went to bed and we finished each other's sentences cause we knew what was going to be said. We watched all the, <clears throat> excuse me, we watched all the graduations, helped heal all their scars, taught the girls, boys ain't any better and don't let them get too far. Help that our sons be gentle and know it is the best way to display strength. Enough said, we felt safe in what we were doing because like I said, we had already seen them when they were wed. Living life backwards makes love a cakewalk. Trust comes easy cause it's already been taught. I don't have to be brave cause the truth is known. You are the only one who makes my house a home. We can laugh about it as we move back into the time when I knocked on your door and was half out of my mind, asked as quickly as I could if you would go with me to the prom, saw your mom over your shoulder smile and wink while you looked at me and said, you had to think. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't already know it's more than okay to be in love and go slow. The only funny part of this regressive scene is that I lived in another state and didn't know you or what was going to be my fate, but you can relate because you were just a little girl with golden curls who didn't know that I was going to be the man who was going to be her world. Yes, living life backwards makes life a cake walk. Trust comes easy because it's already been taught. Heartbreak heals quickly because you know what you sought had already been found and will never be lost. And there you go, that's a quick love led backwards. The next one's called First Lesson. Before words, love awoke, shook the dew from sleep, breathed flight into birds, left tenderness, replace, excuse me, let tenderness replace fear, created laughter so we can remain sane. And then this is just the first three of, of my opening. Um, this one's my teacher. And this, by the way, is obviously going to be dedicated to my son. He grabbed my little finger, pulled himself to a standing position before he knew he wasn't supposed to. The nurse told me he was too young. He was six hours old and already collecting criticism for being ahead of his time. Never heard a word I said, but I watched him copy the way I stood and my expressions flitted across his face before he discovered his own. I never saw a mirror that taught me as much as he could about who I am. They are our greatest teachers if we're willing to learn the lessons they place before us. I heard the ther therapist summarize my thoughts before I heard what I'd been trying to tell myself. How can I, someone caught in his own dilemmas, make such a profound difference in a life? 
I listen to how much I am talking to myself when I'm trying to steer him right. More and more, I find a stillness when I love him without words. We re-threaded the front axle on his bike so we could fit the nut back on and he could ride free. I let him do all the work and earned the biggest smile for being there while he did it. I knew then I had no more excuses for not succeeding. And there you go. Thank you, Tom. They were wonderful. Ah, oh, um, I love the the one about the, the your son. Uh, <laughs> I do. I, I threatened. I've got a whole bunch of them that I've written about him over the years. And I threatened that when he's married, I'm going to put them all together into a book and give them to him as a wedding present. I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. All right. Brian Donald James, you are up. Take it away. I have three short ones tonight. Um, the first one is called Shy One. There you stand, timid and coy pulling down the blinds harshly slow, ushering in an eclipse, your eyes aflame as you approach like a lioness to pray, slow moving in splendor, your curvature of earth, round and bountiful, so beautiful. Thank you. The next piece is called In the Loving. It is in your loving, it is in your healing, my confidant. It is in the decades of tenderness where you are never absent from my life and never absent is the yearning. It is in the kissing of my eyelids when I am weary, when you think I am at rest. When I am cold, you cuddle close. You are the solar warming within my rib. And when universal blackness lays upon us, yes, when the quilt of night keeps us huddled beneath, exposed and fragile, I have no choice but to explore your hills, your valleys, your caverns, and arise with the morning dew, replenished and reborn. Thank you. And the next piece is Creole gal. Ma cherie of Afro-French blood, I bask in your soft brown eyes. And I, though not of your splendid cast, still give greetings just for the wanting of hearing you speak and stir oceans within me with your tender notes. Ma cherie, my love, my burden, we hide in anguish behind smiles masking sorrow for here in my heart you shine, you dwell. Now I at the helm of my little boat and you at the helm of my passion flow lazy down the bayou. Your emerald dress set against supple skin moves me to steal you away behind the moon and make you mine. Thank you. Thanks. Wow, that was beautiful, Brian. Yes, now I know. Now I know Alice is going for that hot shower. It's <laughs> wonderful. All right. Um, all right, I have, let me see. We have Susan Barton Hagen. So Susan, take it away. Okay, I tried my hand at two haikus. Um, the first one is entitled Love Music. Music, all genres, major, minor, diminished, solo, duo, plus. And the second one if I cover my camera, then you will just see the picture. Good. Okay. Uh, Megan probably noticed that uh, my cat already visited and Zoom bombed. <laughs> the title of the poem is her first two names, Princess Sugar Thumbs. 
white, soft paws, batting, claws retracted for banter. Mommy, play with me. Thank you, Susan. Uh, I will tell you lots of cat people on, on Spelled Ink, so you definitely, definitely hit the spot on your second poem. So I know lots of people love their cats on Spilled Ink. More, I think we have more cat lovers than dog lovers on Spilled Ink. So good job on that one. All right, Kelly, where are you? Kelly, take it away. I'll read a very small, I'm, I told Kim B. Miller before that I'm a closet poet. So uh, I did this because Alice said to write a small love poem, less than 14 lines for that umbrella.com thing. So I did it. Anyway, here it is. I'm an artist, visual, not verbal, but we can try it. And the title is Art, Thou Art, My Love. Art is diverse. It will speak its own story, which will be vastly different from the last. Just as ideas are from one to the next and people are from each other. Connected as the earth is to the Milky Way, unexplained as the mystery of faith, understood as the heart that is art. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, Alice, I'm glad you uh, suggested this. We are getting some great poems tonight. I love it. Thank you, Kelly, for joining us. Thank you, um, Thank you. for uh, braving the mic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me see. Uh, we will go with uh, another one. Let's go with um, uh, Lena Booker. Lena Booker, she contacted me this afternoon. I'm glad she uh, is able to be here. I believe she's from Pennsylvania. So, uh, well, Lena, uh, to come on in, tell us about yourself. And she is also a first timer. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Lena, and um, I am from Pennsylvania. And um, I was invited by Leslie. So, Leslie, good to see you. And thank you for the invite and meeting. You. And um, the poem I'm going to share with you is called Love Story. Um, this is dedicated to uh, a past coworker who recently lost her husband. Um, just imagine a very um, cute, short uh, Jewish couple. Uh, they were Orthodox Jew. They taught me a lot about their religion, but they were always together. So uh, married, I don't know, some 50 years, but this is called Love Story in honor of David, David's poem. <clears throat> Ours is a love story I could never put down. No greater story of life lived could ever be found. Strangers who became friends weaving the tapestry line, then turned lovers winding our way through time taking time to pour in goodness as the years unfold. Our cup runneth over as we grew old. This story etched in our lineage will be told to our grands for years who shall know it well as if written on scrolls. Each memory cherished no chapter will go untold. You led, I followed. Two footprints did mold. Into one print forged by faith, beautiful and bold like snowflakes falling from the winter sky. Memories of you shower my heart and softly I begin to cry. Tears of joy that you were indeed all mine. A love story forever, standing the test of time. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Alina, for coming mm -hmm. and uh, reading that. It was wonderful. We are doing a fantastic job on these love love poems. Or, And I will tell you, uh, Valentine's Day is going to be great uh, on Sunday because we are kicking it off 
very, very well. Thank you, Alina, very much. That was wonderful. All right. Um, let's go with Leslie and then Kim. Leslie, then Kim. Seeing that uh, uh, Leslie invited Alina, we'll go to Leslie next. Okay. Um, so this is when you plan life and then life um, interrupts afterwards. We lie with our hearts beating against each other. Beyond words, senses so alive that even the air caresses. Our body's immediate memories silence the unresolved discussion about time and our conflicting schedules. Time and how little we have for each other. Wasting precious minutes, we orbit uselessly around the issue and we talk to no purpose about not planning a future. Before we became our plural, you and I each selflessly made the, selfishly made the choices necessary for our independent survival. And now we have no option but to continue. Isn't it enough to know there will be these supersensory moments when we merge to create light out of darkness, breathe through each other, isn't it enough that we have this time well spent? And this poem came out of kind of a homework assignment um, about dance classes, uh, which I've never taken or done or whatever. So it's called Vertical Position, Horizontal Desire. Our friendship is like a worn pair of shoes, broken in, almost breaking. So we shuffle a line dance with only a few stumbles, comfortable individual rhythm maintained almost without thought. Then with a dramatic whirling turn, you caught me to you saying you were alive again, waking from a long sleep. Thank you, Bogart, to see what you had dreamed had been reality all along. You swept me in a floor covering waltz and breathless I struggled to keep up even as you lifted me along with your awakened love of dancing. You partner me in a sexy samba, charged cha-cha, romantic, romantic rumba. You bask in the music of a familiar partner while I must remember how to dance. After having so long suppressed the desire like a faded dream after waking, but only faded, not forgotten. So I dance with you in daylight, only hoping if this is a dream, I don't wake this time. Mm. And well, this poem kind of speaks for itself, I guess. Um, and it's, it's kind of, to me, a logical sort of follow on to the first one. Already elsewhere. I torture myself with unsaid goodbyes. Easier to hear those words in the silence than to think too deeply about what didn't go right and wonder over again, how much did it or didn't it matter? Easier to see unexpected revelations made under the influence, regretted confessions that reveal too much that can't be changed. Validation coming too late to undo the weather. What broke beyond fixing this time, except for letting go. We return to discreet countries, unable to admit yesterday's regrets. Won't change our minds enough when broken is beyond fixing. Perhaps at some future date, useless contact at a safe distance, maybe with plausible excuses. I'll pretend to believe, or maybe we pretend, nothing happened that night beyond two old friends having too much wine. We will wake from our nightmares, talk to each other as though we were already elsewhere, acting as though nothing happened and there is nothing left to say. Thanks. Thank you, Leslie. I, I must say in your second poem, I loved all your dance references. I did. All right, um, Kim Miller, 
Kim Miller, take it away. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim B. Miller, and I'm the Poet Laureate for Prince William County, Virginia. Good to see some of you all again. So I'm going to do a poem and then some haiku. And if you're available tomorrow, I'll be at Right by the Rails. So stop on by 10 a.m. This one is called Love, and it's from my book, My Poetry is the Beauty You Overlook. I hear the birds. I hear the happiness in their chirps. Their melody is floating on a stream of air, and I inhaled. I'm an admirer of beautiful things. I worship completeness. I don't grasp that compliments because I love the fragrance called me. There may be gaps in my teeth, but not in my beauty. I see stretch marks at lines that allow me to write on my soul. I love this feeling of completeness. I'm not a ray of light. I'm a burst of sunshine. Mm. I see courage in the cracks that people overlook. What you call broken, mm. I call a masterpiece of unassembled pieces. Mm -hmm. The love that radiates from me, from you, I feel it. I heed your frequency. I don't judge your flow. I choose to see you, not critique you. I emancipate your baggage. I superimpose love on your hurt so I can see you better. Mm. I invite you to RSVP to contentment. Mm. Display more compassion. Drip anxious thoughts. Cleanse love. Create solutions to future problems. Love is free. Don't hoard it. Mm -hmm. I'll think your selfishness. So love can be a resource. Expand. Swim in the deep end of love. No one can eclipse you. Love is not missing. It's so deep. Look within. So I'm going to do some haikus for you guys. And what haikus are, short poems, three lines, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, starting Japan only on nature and flowers. Other countries always butchering other people's stuff up. So we changed it so that it could be on any subject. Hey, that's the truth. OK, we, we make it nice, but that's what happened. And so these are non-traditional haikus, so, so you know the difference, haiku. You betray loyalty with lust, and now you want lust to be loyal. Haiku. Companionship is not a solution to pain. Don't give love a job. Haiku. Get counseling. Your mate is not your therapist. They're your victim. <laughs> Sorry, that one always makes me laugh. Haiku. Beginning to see battles are temporary. Love is forever. Haiku. You're not good at goodbyes. You just quit people before they can quit you. Haiku. Your love is only puddle deep, and this ocean does not deal with puddles. Haiku. Love or lust? Lust is rent with an option to buy. Which one do you have? Haiku. The only reason you still have him is because she don't want him back. Haiku. 
<laughs> Let's see what to end with, what to end with. Haiku. If you give them the key to your joy, when they leave, they can take the lock. Thank you. Oh, I love it. The reason you still have him is because she don't want him back. Haiku. <laughs> Let's see what to end with, what to end with. Haiku. If you give them the key to your joy, when they leave, they can take the lock. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Totally. All right, <laughs> Paulette Gardner. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate it. Paulette Gardner and then Sandy. Paulette Gardner and then Sandy, okay? Take it away, Paulette. Hey. Hi. Um, my poem is called Spreading Memories of Love. And I have a quote before the poem that I got offline from Quotes and Smiles. It says, memories is a way of holding on to the things you love, the things you are, the things you never want to lose. While it lasts, love is lovely. We love to love. Some of the many things we love, people, books, Broadway plays, food, nature, music, memories. A cherished memory resurfaced recently. My son had called me at work to ask, mother, where's the peanut butter? I replied, oh, sorry, I have it with me. Mother, you took the whole jar to work? The next time you go to the store, the grocery store, please buy two jars of peanut butter. Our shared memory of crunchy peanut butter is, was, one of our many shared loves. Now we are apart, our loves split in half, and I am left clutching close to my heart, fragments of a memory. Thank you, Paulette. Oh, I love it. Good job, Paulette, thank you. Uh, Sandy? Are you ready? Sandy, take it away. Okay, now? Okay. Yes. Amy Ann, it was love at first sight. I knew I wanted you with all my might. A newspaper ad had brought me to this place, tail wagging, covered in white and tan fur, I instantly knew I wanted her. She was a large dog, a lab mix, jumping and dancing about. I could almost hear her bark, let me out. The owner, holding her leash tightly, I can't, had many dog issues to vent. As she rambled along tirade of Amy's ills, she became uneasy when Amy would not be still. I finally interrupted politely and asked if I could take her home. I explained I live alone and a great big guard dog she would be, someone to take care of me. The owner relented letting her go as Amy moved to and fro. At home, my cats dove under the beds and I realized Amy needed to be fed. And not long after that, we went to bed. Finally that night, once nestled in what was a large space, I knew this would always be Amy's place. I held, <clears throat> I held her tightly as she squirmed in place. And at last I thought, you are in my space. Amy and I walk every day. Even with my walker, I can watch her play. Chasing squirrels up a tree, I thought quietly, she will always be with me. Lord knows I often pray that she will be with me every and each day. I did better on the crying. <laughs> you did great. You are improving each and every time. I love it. So I love the I love the poem about the dog. So because I'm a dog lover. So yeah, pets are wonderful. Thank you, Sandy. You yeah. did a great yeah. job. You really did. Thank you. Thank you. 
where was I? I know Jim Boucher, and then we go uh, Lucy Coons, and then Tony. So it's Jim Boucher, Lucy Coons, and then Tony. So, Jim, take it away. Okay. I have three poetic song lyrics. The first one is a duet between a woman and a man. She, it seems our best moments elude the tale of our love. No cant or charm can bend my ear. No smile can catch my eye. Whatever the future holds, you're always in my sometimes. It's taking so long to know you. So long is gone for now. Our ever so often romance keeps us longing for more. He, I'm trying to catch up to when I left us behind, passing over contrary signs and the edge of your voice. Together we circle close, stubbornly shy and tangled. It's taking so long to know you, so long is gone for now. Our ever so often romance keeps us longing for more. Both. Our goodbyes are short-lived, awaiting hello again. Each renewal can stay the hope to, brush, to break fresh ground again. There's a dream secures today, love every now and again. The time has come to be certain, to render moot our dueling emotions. Let's reach across a bridge's span to tend to root our ruling devotions. He, you must know all my days, I love you. Please marry me. She, each of my days, I love you too. I do wish to wed thee. Both, finally our heart's desires are fulfilled. So long for keeps. It's taking so long to know you. So long is now foregone. Our often as ever romance keeps us longing no more. Nice job, Jim. Okay, the next one is a, is a duet for two sisters. It's called Thanks for Thoughtful. Thanks, Suzanne, for thoughtful, the woman in you that faces the woman in me. Thanks, Kathleen, for thoughtful, the heart in you that graces the heart in me. Thanks, Suzanne, for thoughtful, the smile in you that ignores the edges in me. Thanks, Kathleen, for thoughtful, the center in you that restores the missing in me. Thanks, Suzanne, for thoughtful, the daylight in you that sparkles the dreams in me. Thanks, Kathleen, for thoughtful. The patience in you that wrestles the imp in me. Thanks, Suzanne, for thoughtful. The friend in you who beckons to the shyness in me. Thanks, Kathleen, for thoughtful. The sister in you who reckons with the whole of me. Thanks for thoughtful, always. Okay, the last one is called Find the Moment. I will never mislead you, even though the stars stop shining. Keep pace with me, darling, and our hearts will breeze along. When my fragile temper trembles and your faith wants to slide, find the moment in my shoulder and sense the thrill inside. I will always stand by you, even though the sun is hiding. Keep watch with me, darling, and our hearts will both be strong. When your feeble distance wavers and my shyness turns aside, find the moment in your shoulder and trust the pulse inside. We will ever be steady, even though the moon is waning. Keep time for us, darling, and our hearts will beat a song. When our fateful vision wanders and our depth will be a guide, Find the moment to join shoulders and spring the dreams inside. Thank you, Jim. I just love the thanks for thoughtful. I think that needs to be like the world's mantra right now. I just loved it. Thanks for thoughtful. Nice job, Jim. All right, Lucy Coons moving to you, Lucy Coons. Hello, uh, this is called Black Forest Clock and it's not about romantic love, but 
it's about that love that the universe has for us and how fortunate we are as humans to uh, be embraced. Black Forest Clock. In utero, my soul cuddles me, whispers love and protection as my heart pounds, my lungs grow, my muscles push, readying my limbs to carry me through the life that soon traverses the world where the respiration of oaks and maples flows along the rivulets of my arteries and veins feeding oxygen to my heart, lungs, muscles, all working like a black forest clock wound daily by hand, but with turns of protein, calcium, water, nutrients from the soil that the earth cuddles, whispering love and protection. The end. Thank you, Lucy. Much Thank appreciated. You. Thank you. Uh, um, my name is Tony Atkinson, and I'm joining you from uh, Richmond, Virginia. Um, I'd like to recite my poem, um, Roses Are Red. Um, before I do that, with all this, these haikus that have been recited, it reminded me of one that I read in a, a book of haikus one, once. Uh, and I don't think it, it's an official haiku. I, it may be what you call an American haiku, like you refer to, but I remember it's liking it very much, very evocative. It goes like this. The silence while the present is being opened. That's the haiku. Okay, I'm gonna read, say my poem, Roses Are Red. Uh, I'm going to halfway sing it so I can get the flow right, or I'm going to attempt to do that. Roses are red, violets are blue, but none so lovely as the garden of you. Your smile lights up my day, and when I look in your eyes, I always want to stay. Yes, you're so beautiful, and to be succinct. I like the way you walk and talk and think and how you stand with your hands on your hips and the sweet words that fall from your lips. Yes, roses are red, violets are blue, but none so lovely as the garden of you. Your sweet soul shines its lovely light with a heart that's kind and true. Who could do anything but fall in love with you? Yes, roses are red, violets are blue, but none so lovely as the garden of you. Your smile lights up my day. And when I look in your eyes, I always want to stay. And that's it. Oh my gosh, absolutely wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Tony. I will tell you, uh, most of the people know who I was thinking of. Mike Crowley, Mike Crowley loves to sing his songs too. So uh, one of these days, one of these days I'm thinking maybe we should, we get Tony, we get Mike, we have our, we have an album, we put out the Spilled Ink album. Uh -huh. It would be awesome. Way to go, Tony. Nicely done. Thank you for joining us. You can come back anytime. Feel free. Okay, um, I will put. Uh, I will keep sending you the emails, and you come anytime. Thank you for being the first timer and braving the mic. We appreciate it. Um, Thank you. Uh, let's go, Kathy Haley, then John Cowgill. Kathy, then John. Okay. Um, this is called a son's love of taxis. It's sort of a one person's love inside another. He fell in love with yellow taxis on our first trip to New York. Calling out, taxi, as he pointed, and I pushed his stroller down, down city sidewalks, heading to see zoo penguins in Central Park, fascinated with the way taxis seem to clone themselves stretching out like speeding yellow snakes 
in open traffic, rare, or beeping horns in clusters around intersections at rush hour. He was hooked before stepping inside, but when he watched his godmother hail a cab and open the door inviting him to climb inside, he watched tourists and New Yorkers speed walking on sidewalks, stopping at food carts to eat salty pretzels and hot dogs, at vendor tables to buy souvenirs, toys, and watches, his face pressed to the window, finger pointing, voice thrilled to announce what he saw. That's it. Nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Kathy. Much appreciated. I love the imagery. Uh, it totally, totally felt like uh, New York. Uh, so, the, and the chaos. All right. <laughs> Um, John Cowgill, take it away. All righty. I'm going to show a few photos first, and hopefully I'm going to have, um, hope, okay, it's not working very well. So I got this one. Okay, it's not showing up very well, so I guess I'm not going to show you, but I just wanted to show you some photos of some nice ladies that I have, because my first poem is called to a woman who is gorgeous. To a woman who is gorgeous, a woman who loves, a woman who cares, a woman who gives, a woman who is beautiful, a woman who is created by God, a woman who is patient, a woman who is kind, a woman who makes a great Valentine. And this is the part where you wish her a happy Valentine's Day. So that's number one. And number two is simply called woman. You are a woman. You are very beautiful. You have lovely eyes. Bright is your face. Sparkling are your eyes. You have lovely hair. Beautiful are your lips. Lovely is your nose. Precious are your hands. Lovely are your fingers. Beautiful are your feet, cute are your toes. Yes, you are gorgeous. You very gorgeous woman. And that is that. Thank you, John, much appreciated. Um, and I saw you uh, uh, also had something on the uh, page. Uh, it did seem like it was uh, Valentine's related. What did you put up? I put up, actually, I can go get it if you want me to. I just tell everybody, because I and they can go to the page and look for okay, it. It's called uh, Love on the 1218. That was it. All right. So, yes. everybody, there's a John also has something on the web uh, on the Facebook page. So, go to the Facebook page and read that. So, thank you, John. I just wanted to give you a plug for that. All right. Um, we have, I believe, we have three left. So, it's going to be uh megan cat interruptus mcdonald and then katherine godhart and then of course nick hale so megan mcdonald and cat interruptus take it away okay so i'm going to do something i don't normally do i did real i didn't really have love poems but then i realized i do have some so two things john they're not titled and you you can't give them titles All right. Because there are parts, what I'm going to read from is Arrakesh Scrolls. So it's a, a 21 uh, a, a twenty one part poem with uh, scrolls from uh, three characters, Arrakesh, Tyus, and the scribe. So it's just like Tyus to Arrakesh, Arrakesh to scribe, and, and, and so on. The only one that really has a title is the first one. So I'm going to read three from, from er the Arrakesh Scrolls. Pro... Uh, Oops, sorry. Prologue. Up at dawn, stars still sinking. I stroll into morning, greet the baker. Flower in his hair, eyes, breath. He yells as always, what a life to write and think. Truth is, we scribes are always writing for others. Scribes are blank stone tablets writing for words to etch truth. We scribe whatever 
passes, words flowing without hearing, that Pharaoh's newest campaign, the small messages between lovers are relief in words of arrogance of our masters. Arakesh. Toes po poised in flight, Arakesh holds the scroll, fingering words. These are his. The scribe looks up. Scribe, the reply should read, lotus on water, love petals touch my lips. May we soon hold the lotus in one hand. Scribe to brother, brother, today is the day of judgment. I wait for Mott's decision. The difference between us seems small. Today I write for myself. I miss our long talks by the river of Lotus and Py Papyrus. I know now I was wrong to let she who walked between us separate us in anger. I am content in my small village, safe from past wrongs. If in judging today, you can, see, you, you can see past, right, Minifer. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Uh, and I'm sure if you could, if you can put that in chat so I can spell that correctly. Okay, so uh, the Arakish Scrolls. So thank you very much. All right, we have Alice as be is back in the house. So Alice Mergler has made it back in the house. I just have to announce that. Uh, um, all right, Catherine Gotthard, take it away. Hey, well, thank you, Alice, for making me write a new love poem. Um, I didn't have one. I've been racking my brains like for two weeks now. This is what I came up with, and I've changed the title six times, but I'm sure I'll change it again after. Um, this is called Kitchen Clear. When I remember you, I want you to remember me. Not as I am now, but how it used to be through the narrow opening of time, back to those glistening days running fast through an open faucet, afternoons in the kitchen, the way you'd wet your finger, run it around the edge of the crystal bowl just to hear it sing, or gather a collection of jelly jars, fill each one with the right amount of water, touch the sides with a spoon to make music, Table and counters were not off limits. There was even that hour on the floor, linoleum pressing against my tailbone. How you looked at me, concerned I was cold. After we clinked champagne glasses, you held yours by the stem as if it were a flower, blew on the mouth of the empty bottle, bringing it to life with your very breath. Somehow you forgot to inhale. I had to remind you to take back what you've given lest you forget yourself, suffocate as I've done in memory, as I've done in fantasy, standing at the sink, rinsing out tumblers, believing you might come back. Yes, that must be love. Thank you. Nicely done, Catherine. Oh, good imagery in that one. Thank you very much. All Thank right, you, Catherine. Catherine. Yes. Way to go, Alice. You've inspired all these people to write love poems. So this was a great idea. Fantastic. All right. And let me see. Last but not least, where is Nick Hale? Nick Hale. I am here. <laughs> take it away. All right. I'm going to be sort of the odd one out because I don't normally write lots of love poems. I've got one thing that might kind of pass. Uh, but I wanted to take this opportunity to tell a story because <laughs> I have a good one. You so, can do whatever you want. You go right ahead. Can I play a song? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. All right, this, is, this is what I like to call spill dink story time. I'm going to tell a, a story. Uh, so many of you may know about me that back in the end of 2019, I started uh, eating keto, which uh, if you don't know is where you eat extremely low carb because you train your body to basically burn fat. Uh, so low carb, you want to avoid basically anything starchy. You don't eat bagels. You don't eat pizza. You don't eat cupcakes. You don't eat cookies, no sugar, none of that stuff. And 
I did great. I lost like 50 pounds and then COVID gave it all back to me. Uh, <laughs> and then some. But anyway, uh, so I just started back on it uh, two, about two weeks ago. And last weekend, I had a dream. <laughs> And it's strange because it seems like every time I start keto, I have a dream about this, the kinds of foods you wouldn't normally eat. So anyway, in my dream, John Dutton and I were football coaches and we were coaching a high school football team. <laughs> and we did so well. Our team was did so well. I guess they must have won a game or something. So John decided to give me a bunch of gifts right in front of the team <laughs> as a thank you for coaching. And so I opened up the first gift and it was a box of, or it was, a, it was a towel. The first gift was a towel. And I thought, oh, I wonder if there's like a beach theme to these gifts. So I opened up the second, I picked up the second gift box and it looked like a pizza box. And I thought, oh no, John, what are you doing to me? I can't eat this. I opened it up. It was full of bagels. <laughs> And then the second gift, the, the third gift was actually a pizza. So then we had a party, a little reception. And it's like, man, John, you, I can't eat any of this stuff. <laughs> what are you doing? So up in the cabinet, there was a bag of what I thought was supposed to be like non, uh, non-carb non bagels, you know, like keto bagels. And I thought, okay, so I guess I could have these. I ate the whole bag while talking to one of our players. And then I realized they were real bagels. <laughs> <laughs> and so everything was ruined and then i woke up so john thank you for the pizza and the bagels hypothetically at some point i'm gonna get to have some and the funny thing about this is the first time i did keto i had a dream that i was sneaking a pizza with my ex-girlfriend so <laughs> oh my god the keto bagels just sound so disgusting just saying yeah. keto and bagels together Oh, I just I, see some high-graded piece of like, like sponge. It, oh. It's hard All to right. replicate the texture. He's you in case he doesn't doesn't lose weight on his diet. He's already yes. put up his excuse. Yes. Oh, oh, oh! I, I I'm just glad our football team won, though, Nick. That was good. Yeah, that's the important part. <laughs> we got a W. Yeah, that's good. All right. Oh, what a great night. Um, I do know that. Uh, when, when Alice suggested it, I didn't know if, if people were going to pick it, pick it up and run with it, but you guys did great. Alice, great job of uh, giving us the idea. You guys, it was such a fantastic night. We had uh, 19 people here tonight. Everybody got to, to read, and I'm so thankful for all of you. You guys are spilled ink, and we couldn't do it without you. Um, and... Uh, I love you all, and I so much appreciate you being here. Um, and uh, we, will, we will definitely do this in two weeks, two more weeks.